Jeddah is truly a city of sculpture. It has been estimated that there are up to 600 sculptures placed around the squares, streets, and avenues of the city. Works from virtually every major movement and discipline from the past century have contributed to the city's rich history. The Jeddah Sculpture Museum on the Corniche brings together more than 20 of Jeddah's world-famous sculptures. Some of the most prominent sculptures in Jeddah have been exposed to the natural elements, strong winds, and the salt of the sea, and had suffered extensive damage over the last few decades. Circular Mass by Arnaldo Comodoro, purchased from the Marlboro Gallery in Rome through the auspices of the architect Julio La Fuente. Flames. Sylvestre Monnier described the effect of his flames sculpture as sunlight carves out ever-changing shadows of outlines and spaces reflecting the movement of city life. Three-piece reclining figure number one by Henry Moore. Henry Moore said, in three-piece reclining figure number one, it is a space that becomes the active agent so that the material is turned from an inert mass into a composition which has a full form existence. The Eye by Cesar Baldaccini. Mayor Mohammed Farsi met Cesar Baldaccini in the late 70s, describing him as representative of those artists whose work reflects an age of wars and social destruction. In 1965, Cesar Baldaccini returned to a more traditional conception of sculpture in a series of works based on parts of the human body, such as the eye the thumb, and the fist, all three of which are now in Jeddah. Cube 4 by Arnaldo Pomodoro During the 1960s, Pomodoro started making large freestanding sculptures in the form of cubes, cylinders, spears, and cones. 
He often added fractured and eroded elements suggestive of a continual process of self-destruction and regeneration that seemed to deny the perfection sought by sculptors like Brancusi with his idealized shapes. Illusion of a Second Cube by Victor Vasarelli. By the end of the 1950s, Victor Vasarelli was working with small square units in metal or plastic on which squares or circles were printed, as well as trapezoids, diamonds, and ovals. By assembling these in what seemed to be an infinite number of variations, the artist could play local color and pattern events against the optically induced larger forms of the whole. Changing Positions Another Victor Vasarelli work Muhammad Farsi met Vasarelli in 1981. From our first conversation, I sensed his youthful, vigorous, and enterprising spirit. He was enthusiastic about continuously presenting new ideas so as to keep pace with our fast-moving world, and believed that as new art materials became available, they should be used on advertising hoardings at subway stations, bus stops, and the like. Balance in the air. This is the third art for Victor Vasarelli. Victor believed that art should be seen everywhere in everyday life. with points by Henry Moore. Henry Moore was among the first generation of sculptors in Europe who endeavored to create sculptures based primarily on emotional responses to material forms. The landscape played an important part in his work and many of his sculptures were placed outdoors. Flame of Life by Ila Hiltonin it was during the 1970s that the Finnish artist Ila Hiltonen traveled to the Middle East, resulting in major public works in Tehran and Jeddah. She met Mayor Farsi several times in Saudi Arabia and Finland between 1977 and 1982 and completed a number of works for the city including Sunflower Field and Flame of Life. La Joa de Vivre, The Joy of Life, by Jackis Lipchitz. Much of the work of Jackis Lipchitz from the late 1920s until his death in 1973 combines the formal language of Cubism with the open, lyrical quality of his transparency. 
Cubism, as Lipchitz saw and practiced it, was envisaged as the most human of art forms, a celebration of mankind's creativity, engaging the active involvement of the viewer's imagination through surprise and metaphor. Flexibility of Pollens by Alexander Calder In the 1960s and 1970s, Alexander Calder's colossal stables, commissioned for public sites all over the world, used arcing forms and dynamic surfaces to complement the geometric regularity of modern architecture. Another version of Flexibility of Pollens is located at the Calder Foundation in New York. This is one of the last works by Alexander Calder. Rotating first section number three by Arnaldo Pomodoro. Pomodoro invites the viewer to circle the globe, conveying a sense of uninterrupted rotational movement imitating the orbit of planets. The scratched surfaces and expressive eroded quality of his work, which was often exhibited out of doors, shows the influence of art in formula. Large Spindle Piece by Henry Moore Large Spindle Piece is said to have been inspired by a flint pebble that Moore picked up in the fields near his home in Hertfordshire, England. A Step Forward by John Arp, also known as Hans Arp, was the son of a German father and a French mother. In the early 1930s, his sculptures developed from relief sculpture to sculpture in the round. From then on, he sought a concrete art sculptures that identify themselves with natural forms without description or imitation. He was a founding member of the group Obstruction Creation in 1931. The background to this untitled sculpture is not new. This is a work done by Drago Marin Cerina. He is a sculptor and painter who was born in Korkula in Croatia. Sharina has had more than 100 international exhibitions, and as well as Jeddah, his work can be seen in many European cities, the USA, Japan, and Australia. He currently lives and works in Taiwan. Alterations in Space by Francois Kovacs the sculptures by Francois Kovacs are strongly influenced by his career in medicine and in particular his research into spongy bone structure. Upright Moth 
motif number two. Henry Moore was asked to paint a sculpture for the courtyard of the new Olivet office building in Milan in 1954. He recalled that when he visited the site, a lone Lombardi poplar growing behind the building convinced me that the vertical work would act as the correct counterpoint to the horizontal reading of the building. Project for a Monument Miro believed that sculpture must stand in the open air, in the middle of nature. He wrote, wherever you are, you find the sun, a blade of grass, the spirals of the dragonfly. Courage consists of staying at home, close to nature, which could not care less about our disasters. Project for a monument, like the other work by Joan Miro in Jeddah, Wesu was cast at the Fonderia von Vecini in Verona in 1981 when the artist was 87. Project for a monument weighs approximately 3 tons and was cast in an edition of four, one of which is Milan and another in the Kimbell Art Museum, Fort Worth. Wesu Bird Wesu, like the other work by Joan Miro in Jeddah, Project for a Monument, was cast at the Fonderia von Vecini in Verona in 1981, when the artist was 87. Wesu is based on a 1968 sheet iron sculpture, also called Wesu, which once surmounted a column above the roof of the foundation made in St. Paul, events in southern France.
provided a tool for an open-air museum, housing of these sculptures in a 7 square kilometer park along the Jeddah Cornish, known locally as Alhamdulillah. I'll make another video for the street sculptures in Jeddah. I hope to see you there. Bye!